Well, it is time for Peter's Pans and Picks. Joining us as always, friend of the stream, CBS Travel Editor Peter Greenberg. Peter, where in the world are you? Uh, in this bland-looking scene behind me, I'm in yeah. the middle of the Los Angeles Convention Center here. Oh. Uh, we're actually here for a huge uh, travel convention of about 7,000 people from all over the world talking about travel to and through the United States. Okay, sounds fun. Not the most exotic place, actual physical space we've seen you in. But uh, let's begin with Boeing. Yeah. Failure to launch. Uh, it was supposed to be their first full ray into space, but a valve issue forced Boeing to scrap the mission a couple hours before liftoff. Boeing's got plenty of issues here. Um, and, you know, and including just, just today talking about, you know, these pro-Palestine groups, you know, wanting universities to divest in Boeing. I, I mean, that, that's another crinkle, too. But this this space thing, was this supposed to be a big moneymaker or is this a diversion to all people or is this a, a big upset? No, Boeing has a pretty robust space program. In yeah. fact, they were they're in competition right now with Elon Musk and his SpaceX program mm -hmm. that was all put together by NASA uh, for a manned spacecraft. And uh, the, this uh, Starliner was supposed to launch last night at about 1034 Eastern time. Uh, they erred on the side of caution when they had a problem. This does not necessarily mean it's an unusual situation. We've seen NASA scrub flights left and right over the last couple of years. In fact, over the last couple of decades. But the optics, of course, of Boeing are not great since because, well, since they've got all these other problems going on in the last week or so, mm -hmm. you and I talked about a second whistleblower dying uh, last week. And now we're dealing with a second investigation by the FAA on the 787 Dreamliner. That's in addition to their investigation on the 737, the U.S. De Justice Department criminal probe, and of course the continuing NTSB investigation on the incident that happened back in January. So the optics for Boeing right now not looking particularly good, but let's uh, give them the benefit of the doubt that they, they just didn't launch for a PR purpose last night. They decided to err on the side of caution, and they'll try it again. Probably would be a lot better off had they been erring on the side of caution for uh, many, many years uh, in the past. Okay, so switching gears now. State Department cautioning against traveling to one of the top international destinations for Americans, Germany. Uh, but there are four different levels of those advisories. Germany, level two, place like Haiti, Syria, level four. Um, you know what the impetus of this is or what it means sure. to be a two? You know, the idea of a two, let me run these through for you real fast. Yeah. There are four different levels of State Department advisories that were instituted in the State Department of the Trump administration to try to make it a little bit more equally applied. Yeah. Uh, those three words still have a negative connotation, State Department advisory. Level one under the new regime means travel with normal caution. Honestly, I have no idea what that means. I'll interpret that to mean don't trip and fall. Uh, travel level number two is where we are with Germany and many other countries right now. It means travel with increased caution. For most Americans, that means they're putting plywood on their windows. It just means realistically to be situationally aware. And they're doing that again out of an abundance of caution based on uh, intelligence chatter that they're getting on possible increased terrorist activity. You can expect to see a level two for France as we get closer to the Olympics because that's a normal target yeah. in situations like that. Level three is the one that everybody starts running from, and that means reconsider travel. Now you're in the safe room in the basement, and level four, as you mentioned about Syria and some other locations, means do not travel. Now, once again, uh, these are not laws. They're not rules. They're not regulations. They're still advisories. They're not bans. Yeah. So from, there are about maybe five places in the world I wouldn't go right now. But there are 196 countries that leaves another 191 where I would, as mm -hmm. long as I'm situationally aware and I pack some common sense. Syria and Haiti would be two places you probably don't go right now, right? Unless you're doing a documentary oh. on upheaval in Syria and Haiti. Well, my metric for where I wouldn't go is I won't go anywhere where no one's in control and Haiti certainly qualifies. Yeah, Haiti qualifies for that. Okay. Uh, you wrote about cities with the worst air quality in the United States on your site, petergreenberg.com. Uh, you've been all over the world many times. How does bad air um, change how you personally travel? Any tips? I mean, and, and what is bad air here compared to like bad air in some places in China? I mean, like, you, you know what I'm saying? Can you give me a scale? Sure. 
Well, it gets down to concentration of bad air because most of the places in the U.S. that have really bad air are small communities that are trapped by their natural right. environment. Uh, now, you mentioned China. Uh, the, the, the air index there is just pathetic. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you ask about the impact of that. Most of the places I go to, it's part of what I do for a living. So I'm not making the same choices that maybe a vacationer might make. But I will tell you this, the impact of me on bad air is an inability to sleep, uh, an inability uh, to maintain health because your your systems become weaker, meaning you're more susceptible to uh, infection or cold uh, or flu. I mean, for me, it's it's I try to avoid it at all costs. But right now, uh, here's one that might surprise you: the largest city in America with the best air. Which one do you think it is? Largest city in America with the best air: Dallas. It's Las Vegas. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because there's really not a lot of industry there. Well, yes. I mean, there's industry, it's located, but it's, en it's entertainment flowing, industry. Yeah. The worst quality probably is inside the casino, but in terms of the city itself, breathe deep. Yeah, right. Inside the casino, though. Boy, those smokers playing those five cent slots, they. Don't stop. Okay, Peter Greenberg, our friend, thank you for joining us. Uh, enjoy uh, your stay. Los Angeles. It's, it's going to be more, I'm sure, I'm sure there are much better sites than what you've got in the backdrop, but we uh, look forward to your backdrop and where you are traveling next week. Thank you, sir. You got it.